Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for August the 27th. I'm Jonathan Kingsler. Today's scripture reading is found in Psalms 111 to 117 and 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 1 through 24. The title of my devotional is Stay Married and we're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 19 which says circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing but what matters is the keeping of the commandments of God. Now, what is this about in terms of circumcision and uncircumcision on a section that's mostly on marriage, but also has to do with singleness um, and whether one should get married or, and especially is talking about stay married if you are already. So coming back in terms of understanding about circumcision, God gave Abraham the covenant of circumcision. Um, and this would have been shocking to some Jews who didn't understand the place of Christ. Why does Paul say that circumcision is nothing? Well, the old sign of covenant people, of the covenant people, which was circumcision, has given way to the circumcision of the heart. And so circumcision in terms of in the flesh is nothing or uncircumcision in the flesh is nothing. But rather, rather what matters is being able to keep the commandments of God, being able to and keeping them. And that can only take place in Christ, who gives us a circumcision of the heart. Another way of saying it, he could have said it, is um, circumcision in the flesh is nothing, or uncircumcision in the flesh is nothing. What matters is being circumcised in the heart, being set apart and made holy by God, having his spirit come in and cleanse and wash us, and his spirit um, enabling us to walk in his ways, even as he writes his law on our, on our hearts. So we see, for example, in Galatians 6, verse 15, um, that we, we see the place of circumcision again. Actually, almost exactly the same words given there. Galatians 6, 15, neither is circumcision anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And so we see there what's important is a new creative work that comes place only in Christ. Galatians 5, 6 has the same thing. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. There in Galatians 5, 6, it says, but faith working through love. And so there, putting these three together, we have faith working through love, we have a new creation, and we have keeping the commandments of God. That's what matters. And of course, what needs to happen first is the creative act of God, um, who, who he gives to everyone who has faith in him and producing love and keeping then the commandments of God, loving God and loving others. So being in Christ means a new orientation, a new life that pleases God and obeys his commandments. In a context where Paul writes about being under the lordship of Christ, that our bodies are not our own, the place of marriage is an important question. Um, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 13, for example, Paul tells them um, that the body is not for immorality, but it's for the Lord. The Lord is for the body. The proper use of, of the body is for the Lord. We should use it as he wills. And 6 verse 20 says, glorify God in your body. You've been bought with a price. And so marriage, you can't just do whatever you want. You, you have to do what's in accordance with the commands of God, with his will for your life. So Paul reminds the Corinthians in chapter 7 that although our situation is profoundly changed in Christ, we are in an area of already not yet. There are some changes that have been brought about, but marriage is still around and we still need to obey it. For those who are joined in Christ, a marriage is still going to be the norm for most. We don't seek to obey God in merely an outward fashion, in the flesh, according to appearance sake, but from the heart. And we can do so because of the change he's brought. And in regard to qualifications to be singled or married, we are accountable to God for our decisions, convictions that must be based on God's gifting and calling. So 1 Corinthians 7, 7, Paul says, Yet I wish that all men were even as I myself am, that is, as a single. However, each man has his own gift from God, one in this manner and another in that. And so 
It's up. To, how has God gifted you? How has he called you? And then in verse 20, he says, each man must remain in that condition in which he was called. If you were called when you were single, well, then you don't need to get married immediately. And that's what 1 Corinthians 7, 27 talks about. Are you bound to a mouth? Do, uh, are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be released. Uh, remain in that situation uh, uh, um, uh, at which you were called. A single? Don't seek to be joined immediately. Um, or are you married? Don't seek to don't seek a divorce. Um, what is God calling you to? And first of all, He's calling you to peace. He's calling you to live the life that He has for you. He's calling you to love first of all the spouse that He's given you. You love her with with or him. Um, Man must love their wives and women must love their husbands with their whole hearts. They're the first, if they're not saved, they're the first, first mission field even that God has given you. But regardless of the choices one makes or the situation situations one finds themselves in, Paul, Paul advocates obedience to God's commandments. Or as he will say in 1 Corinthians 7.35, undistracted devotion to the Lord. Are you committed first and foremost to Christ, who is the groom of the church? How does your devotion to Christ influence the relationship you have with your spouse as well as with others? If you're single, how does it influence the way you treat and you look at other people? Are you looking to serve them even as Christ has loved you? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word. It is not an easy word, and there's a lot here. But Lord, you call married people to stay married if possible. Um, that we should do everything we can in love, um, laying our lives down even for one another. And for those who are single, we should find, first of all, our fulfillment in you. And that, Lord... We don't need a, a spouse to complete us, but Lord, you do direct our steps and you give gifts to one and different ones even to another. And so one of the awesome parts about being a Christian is we know you and we know the gifts you've given us. So Lord, reveal that to us, how you've gifted us and called us. In your name we pray. Amen.